Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Sarah Ponick, and I'm an Education USA advisor here at the US UK Fulbright Commission. And I'm delighted to be here tonight with um, several guests who will be speaking to you about American studies uh, as part of a UK degree and doing a year abroad uh, in the US as part of that degree. Um, and so just to let you know, um, tonight's session will be recorded. And so if for some reason you have any connectivity issues or you need to um, uh, hop off before the, the finished session, please know that we'll be recording the session and sending you a link to it. Um, and so do not worry about that. Um, and before I get started and uh, hand over, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what the session will offer and also a little bit about what we can offer you at Education USA and the US um, UK Fulbright Commission. So in this session, we'll offer an overview of American Studies degree programs in the UK, and you'll have the opportunity to hear uh, from current student experiences and as well as their insights from time spent studying abroad at US institutions. And you'll also hear about study abroad opportunities to the US. <clears throat> and um, in addition to all of the lovely uh, commentary that you'll hear from all of our speakers this evening, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we offer um, at the US-UK Fulbright Commission. Um, and so just a little bit about who we are. So we were established more than 70 years ago in the aftermath of World War II by a man named Senator Fulbright, who himself studied in the UK as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. And he thought that the best way to avoid World War II three would be to encourage a cultural and educational exchange. So we're a non-for-profit organization that's jointly funded by the US and UK government to promote peace and cultural understanding through educational exchange. And we actually do that in a number of ways. So one way that we do that is actually by offering scholarships for postgraduate study and research in the US and the UK. And we also offer an advisory service to assist students, parents, and advisors with applying to US universities. Um, and that advisory service is actually part of the Education USA network, which is a US Department of State network of over 400 international student advising centers throughout the world. Uh, and our aim as Education USA advisors is to offer free and unbiased advice to help UK students to study in the US. And we're actually the only official source of US study in the UK. Um, and as part of our offering, we're really delighted tonight to be having this session about um, an American studies degree, which offers the opportunity to do a year abroad in the US. And so with that, um, I am going to stop sharing um, my screen. And I am going to hand over to Dr. Hilary Emmett from UEA, who is going to get us started. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, as Sarah said, my name is Hilary Emmett. Um, I teach American Studies at the University of East Anglia, so UEA. Um, but I'm particularly delighted to be here this evening because my journey to being a teacher of American Studies actually started 20 years ago with a Fulbright scholarship to Cornell University in the United States. And I can genuinely say I would not be sitting in front of you this evening um, if it had not been for that for that scholarship. Um, my enthusiasm for my expertise in American studies comes out of that time um, at Cornell. I went there planning to study something completely different um, and got completely sucked in um, in a really good way with, by, by American studies and the kind of approach to literature, which is my main field that that, that offers. So so I can say that an experience with Fulbright um, with studying abroad quite literally changed my life. Um, so in preparation for this particular session, uh, I had a little surf around uh, the websites um, for the various programs in American studies, because obviously I, I know the UEO prog program very well, but I want to get a bit of a sense of, of what it is that, um, that, that other programs offer. Um, and it struck me that, that actually, you know, we all, we all share the same um, kind of passion and enthusiasm for, for the United States, um, but three things leapt out at me um, about how and why you might study America in the UK. 
And the first is actually to do with that idea of passion and enthusiasm um, in that almost all of, of the websites around the courses talked about the strong feelings that the idea of America engenders so in people. So, so I think everyone's got an opinion about America. Everyone's got an investment, I think, in, in the place of America in the world. Uh, the second is to do with uh, interdisciplinarity. So this is to do with the range of approaches that you can take um, to understanding America in an American studies degree. And the third, to do, third is to do with social justice and how a degree in American studies can help you tackle some of the most pressing questions of the present. So this isn't just about learning about the past or, you know, watching films or it will absolutely, all of those things will coalesce to help you address the concerns of the present. So first up, um, I think most of my colleagues on here will agree American culture elicits a passionate response from observers from outside the US. America is still very much thought of as a central player on the world stage and the reach of its political and popular culture continues to affect people around the globe. And I think we, we've seen this really radically um, over the past four or five years or so in the impact on, on contemporary, of, of contemporary American politics on, on our lives in, in the UK and, and elsewhere. So on an American studies degree, um, you'll get to study the United States from literary, cultural and historical perspectives. So you'll get to understand the effect that, that the US has from a range of perspectives. Through the exploration of novels, plays and comic books, landmark historical events and political crises, films, photographs or paintings, you'll gain detailed knowledge of the key moments and debates that have shaped the United States. You'll get to groups with histories of race, gender, and civil liberties within America, and you'll examine how US power has been projected around the world. You'll explore a range of aspects of American culture from the popular to the avant-garde, but increasingly you'll learn about the role played by mass media in shaping contemporary politics, from fake news and Facebook to the representation of climate change and ecological disaster. So whatever path you choose through your studies, American Studies is a degree that will provide you with a comprehensive understanding of how America has shaped and been shaped by the world around us. And I, and I think this is where some of that, that passion comes from, you know, that, that, that people always have an, an opinion um, on the US and what it should and shouldn't be doing, what role it should or shouldn't play in, in shaping world culture. So you'll learn about the relationship between culture and politics while gaining an in-depth knowledge of the forces that transform societies and build nations. And I think that, you know, however you feel about the US's influence um, over the past 100 plus years on the world stage, it has been absolutely integral to shaping national identities and, and being a driving force of political change in the world. So it's this relationship between culture and politics that I want to focus on um, in my second point here. Um, and this is the question, what makes American studies stand out from other humanities or social science degrees? And this is that it's, it's cross-disciplinary or interdisciplinary, as, as we like to say. So the three core disciplines of American studies are history. Um, that includes political history, international relations, social history, cultural history, uh, literature, and cultural studies. And this means that you'll get disciplinary training in three different approaches to the United States. So you're effectively getting three degrees for the price of one. Um, you'll learn how literature and film are connected to politics, um, or you'll learn what role popular culture has played in history. So such as the history of civil rights and black freedom struggles, um, or the history of Native American activism around sovereignty and environmental exploitation. So you'll learn about all the ways in which all the aspects of culture, historical and contemporary, are deeply enmeshed with one another. And you'll be given the disciplinary skills to analyze historical sources, to analyze literary cultures and, and literary sources, and to analyze visual sources and, and, and popular culture. But most importantly, you'll learn how to weave those disciplinary skills together um, to build rich and complex understandings of the key political issues that shape our society today. This interdisciplinary perspective will help you understand America, but it will also help you address questions that might be closer to home. For example, why visual representation matters, 
and why campaigns such as Roads Must Fall or the Edward Colston debates are so interested in statues. You know, why, why do statues matter? Um, or you might learn about questions that affect us a bit more globally. Uh, we had a student at, at UEA recently um, who studied a module on climate change fiction and went on to write their dissertation on uh, the representation of climate change and climate, climate crisis in fiction. Um, and they're now the sustainability communications officer at a big town planning um, company in London. And, and their role is precisely to communicate to people um, why we need both immediate action and long-term strategies for sustainability. Um, and they're able to, to pitch themselves uh, for, for that role, for that job, um, via a module that they've taken on, on climate change fiction and the research that they've done, the independent research they've done into climate change um, and its representation in fiction. So, so this leads me to my third and final point, um, which is that one of the biggest reasons to study in the US um, or to study the US uh, is to get to grips with the present moment we're facing. Um, because it often feels like we're in an unprecedented moment um, of crisis and change. And I think American studies will give you a solid grounding in the historical and cultural roots of contemporary inequality and injustice, um, as well as providing you with the tools to communicate exactly how these histories can affect, can, can affect the present and how they can help you affect actual social change, right? So, so one of the things that I think is, is really uh, unique about an, an American studies degree is that it, it allows you to bring those things together, the history, the culture, the literature, the art, um, and, and talk about the, the, the roots of, of our contemporary moment, but also give you that, that ability to articulate, you know, how we can use those histories, how can we use this, this knowledge of culture to affect change, to speak to the people that need to hear what it is that we have to say. So you'll study literature and culture and history through such lenses as race, capitalism, capitalism sexuality, labor movements and political protest. In doing so, you'll gain new insight into current movements like Black Lives Matter, Defund the Police, Idle No More, uh, the resistance to the Dakota Access Pipeline, Occupy Wall Street, which is to name just a few of the protest movements that have galvanized activists um, first in the US, but which have rippled outwards to have effects across the globe. Um, that's certainly something that I think we can, we can talk about more if people are interested in, in talking about that. So ultimately, American studies degrees produce confident, flexible graduates who are able to connect the past to the present and most importantly, to demonstrate why that matters. Um, and I know we have uh, a couple of, of students and graduates here on the webinar. Um, so I am going to hand over to Amanda. I do see there's one or two questions in the chat. Um, so I might take a look at that. Um, so, so yeah, I don't think any of those are, are related specifically to my presentation. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Amanda to tell us a little bit about what it's like being a, a student um, of American studies in the UK. Yes, hello, um, I'm Amanda Albion. I am a third year history and politics of the America students at the Institute of the Americas at UCL. Um, I'm currently doing my year abroad at the University of Pennsylvania, so I'm actually right now in Philadelphia. Um, so I started my degree in the autumn of 2019, so right before the pandemic hit. So luckily I was able to uh, live a little bit of a normal university life uh, before COVID came along. Um, when I was in sixth form, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to study um, at university. Um, I loved history. I loved the political science, um, but I'd always focused on European history and European politics. And I wanted to try something new and to sort of expand my knowledge about the world. And then I found this uh, course in history and politics of the Americas at UCL. And I thought that sounded absolutely perfect. Uh, growing up, I'd always been interested in US politics um, and history, more recent history. Yeah, but I'd never uh, studied Latin American studies or done Caribbean history, which is actually included in this degree as well, if uh, you want to, if you're interested in learning more about Latin America or Caribbean as well. Uh, I also learned that the United States is inherently interconnected with uh, South America in so many ways, from everything through um, interventionism in Latin America to just exchanging cultures and, and, uh, and people. It's, it's really interesting. So... Um, well, anyhow, I did actually have a lot of friends um, who joined the course who actually had studied uh, U.S. history, for example, in sixth form. So I know a lot of people do that, and that's how they gain their interest for studying American politics and history. Um, 
but as I said, I didn't. So I was just completely new to this whole new world and uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. So the first year of studying history and politics of the Americas, you, you get a good, a good basic knowledge about what it is you're supposed to study. So um, as Hilary mentioned, this is a very you know, interdisciplinary subject, American studies and, and uh, this whole degree in this whole area of studies is very interdisciplinary. Um, I took uh, courses in, for example, anthropology, political science, history. It's, um, you really have the opportunity to make your own path and to navigate through this um, big um, thing that is American studies to see what you like and what you prefer. So personally, I am very interested in current US politics. Um, and so UCL and the Institute of the Americas gave me the opportunity to uh, go more in depth on the areas that I loved most. So I took a lot of protest politics in the United States, for example, um, and Cold War history in the United States, uh, which really helped me gain a better understanding and knowledge of the United States. And with this um, course, uh, History and Politics of the Americas, you can um, include a year abroad as part of your degree and thus make it into a four-year degree, which I have done. So uh, during my second year, I had the opportunity to like uh, apply to a college in the United States. And um, luckily I got into the University of Pennsylvania, which is an amazing school. It's an Ivy League college. It is in Philadelphia, a wonderful, wonderful city. It's close to New York. It is just a beautiful city. And um, so I've been here now for a couple of months and it's in so, so interesting to actually learn more in person about what you've studied back home at UCL or what I did. Uh, the culture here is, is, while you might think that it's quite similar, it really isn't in so many ways, especially the contrast between college life in the UK and, or college life in the US, sorry, and university life in the UK. It's, it's very different in so many different ways and aspects. Um, so I've, I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know that, but also to immerse myself in the culture and society here, learning more about, for example, Thanksgiving as, uh, you know, which is coming up next week and, and just everything. And I'm really looking forward to coming back to UCL next year and be able to apply everything that I've learned uh, here into my studies uh, as I'm writing, for example, my dissertation. Um, I really want to focus on feminism in the United States, for example, and I'm um, taking courses here related to that, which is an amazing opportunity. Um, and I have other friends from UCL, from my, my degree, uh, who are, for example, at Purdue or maybe are in California, at the University of California in Santa Barbara, um, or I have friends at uh, Northwestern in Texas. So it really is whatever you prefer. If you don't want to live the East Coast life, which I'm doing, or maybe you want to experience California, this is the perfect course um, for you. And it's also just pass fail, actually. So we have time to focus on what we love here. Um, but yeah, and uh, there are so many opportunities to do in the future. I personally, I, I, I would love to go into US-UK relations or US-Sweden relations as I am Swedish um, originally. Um, so I feel that there are many opportunities in the future, as Hillary mentioned, since it's so interdisciplinary and since you gain such a broad and uh, in-depth understanding of not just one area, but so many different, I feel like uh, I and Flores would really appreciate that. So yeah, if you have any questions later for me, what are my experiences, um, feel free to ask me later, otherwise I will hand over to Anne-Marie. Thank you, Amanda. That was great. Um, and it's really nice to kind of pick up um, what Amanda has just kind of really nicely led us into. So my name is Anne-Marie Angelo. I am a lecturer in history and American studies at the University of Sussex in Brighton. Um, and for the past five years, I've been the director of the Year Abroad Program in American Studies at Sussex. So I'm going to be talking for the next few minutes specifically about uh, the study abroad opportunities that come with doing an American studies degree in the UK. Um, <clears throat> I'll say as well that I 
am American, surprise, no surprise there by my accent, um, and that I studied American studies as, as an undergraduate uh, at the University of Virginia in the US. Um, and I've really enjoyed for the past nine years um, being a part of the network and group of people who study American studies in the UK. Um, it really is a wonderful subject um, and um, a wonderful way to learn about the US and then also um, as part of your degree to get to spend time studying at a, at a US or Canadian um, institution is a very special part. So um, just to kind of give you an overview, uh, 12 universities uh, at which you can do American studies degrees in the UK offer a year abroad uh, in North America. And of those 12, there are four that also offer a semester abroad program. So if you're doing a semester abroad, that would mean that you would probably be doing a three-year degree and you would spend one term of the year um, in North America. Um, but the, in the main, the main kind of opportunity is to do a full year abroad. And that, as I said, exists at 12 different institutions. Um, at some of those institutions, the year abroad, um, your grades from the year abroad count towards your overall degree result. Um, and then at some, it is pass fail, as Amanda just explained, it is at UCL. Um, most universities have um, on their websites when you're looking at the American Studies course will have a link to a list of the North American institutions where you can study abroad or they might have a map. Um, the range of choice for American Studies students in the UK is really amazing. Um, at my institution, we have over 45 different North American university partners in the US and Canada. And just like Amanda said, you can be sort of all over the place, whether that means you've dreamed of living in California for a year, or um, you've dreamed of being in Boston, um, or you want to be in Vancouver or Toronto or Florida, or in the middle of the country in Chicago or St. Louis. Um, there are opportunities at very sort of traditional college experience type campuses, um, universities with big kind of um, student numbers and big sports um, uh, teams. There are opportunities at smaller liberal arts colleges like Reed College in Oregon, Mount Holyoke, which is a women's college uh, in Massachusetts. So there, the opportunities really run the gamut. Um, and American Studies students in the UK are spoiled for choice at the number of opportunities that are available to you to really deepen your study um, and to have the experience of being at a North American institution. A really cool thing to note is that um, thanks to the support of the UK government, um, 15 is so if you are studying abroad for a full year as a UK student, um, as a home fee student, you pay just 15% of your normal tuition fees for the year that you study abroad. So that means that in the year, which would be the third year of your degree, that you would go to North America, you would be spending just about um, no more than 2,000 pounds um, in tuition fees, um, which is a wonderful kind of aspect of the support that you get um, to do a year abroad. If you go to an American Studies uh, degree program that offers the year abroad, you will most likely be doing a four-year degree. That means you'll spend two years um, studying on your UK campus, and then in your third year is the year that you will spend abroad. And then in your fourth year, you'll come back and do your final year of study on your UK campus. And one of the reasons why we do this year abroad in the middle as opposed to at the very end, um, is that on your year abroad, you'll have some terrific opportunities to really kind of grow your knowledge, your understanding, and explore new interests. Um, and many, many students take things that they've done on their year abroad and incorporate them into their final year essays, um, dissertations, and specialist modules. So you're sort of going away and doing a year, but that year isn't separate from your degree. It's a fully integrated part of your degree. Whilst you're studying in North America, you'll have the opportunity to take courses alongside other North American students. 
And you'll also have the opportunity to get involved. Um, so students get involved in a range of different ways outside the classroom. Um, I know somebody in the chat had asked about sport, um, and we did have a student a couple of years ago who got involved on the swim team of her year abroad university. So it is possible to get involved in sport teams, whether at a competitive level or at a recreational level. Um, we've had some students who have done internships. Um, so we had a student who was very interested in journalism and in racial justice. Uh, she sought out and did an internship with a journalist organization in Chicago that researches um, cases of police brutality against African Americans. And so she got to do the same work that other journalists were doing um, in the third year of her degree, um, kind of writing up and researching incidents of anti-Black violence. Um, we had another student who interned with a veterans organization in Washington and another student who interned with a member of Congress in Washington. Um, so the opportunities, there can be opportunities to get a bit of work experience. Um, but the core, of course, of your year abroad is the study that you do. Um, and the academic opportunities um, are in North America, and that's because so many of the courses and modules you can take um, at US and Canadian universities have American studies related topics. So you might be interested in Native American studies or Amanda was talking about feminism and you can take really deep specialist modules um, that are research led with faculty who specialize in those areas. Um, so you can get the opportunity to kind of go deep in your degree and you can also um, sometimes get the opportunity to do research. So I just had a student email me last week who's studying abroad at um, Elon University in North Carolina and one of her professors this semester has invited her to do a research project on the Supreme Court with her next semester. So as an undergraduate to get that kind of research opportunity with a professor is, um, is pretty special. Um, just looking if there's anything else I wanted to cover. Um, one last thing to mention, um, there is, uh, you might be thinking about how costly this might be. Um, there are some financial guarantees that um, that students are asked to meet, um, but your student loan is, if you take a student loan, it's offered to you at a higher rate in the year that you're studying abroad because it's recognized that you will have greater costs involved with travel, um, with preparation to go abroad, um, with traveling back to the UK if you want to come home in between terms. Um, at Sussex, we have a scholarship called the Rupert Wilkinson Scholarship that's awarded to two students each year. Um, one student gets 5,000 pounds toward their year abroad and another student gets um, 1,650 pounds toward their year abroad. Um, so there are opportunities at different, different institutions to gain some support um, towards the cost of studying abroad. Um, but in general, it's a wonderful program and I really encourage all of you to um, to explore through the different university websites um, the year abroad opportunities. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have now or later on. I will pass over to Matthew, who's at Swansea, who's going to talk about his experience of having studied abroad in Ohio. Thanks, Thanks Anne Marie. Uh, yeah, so currently I'm a master's student in American studies at Swansea University. So now this is my fifth year. Um, studying American studies. Um, so as Amory says, um, you take your year abroad in third year, which I did. Um, it was cut a bit short due to COVID. So I had to come home, I think maybe three months early. But the experience that I did have while I was out there for those nine or so months was one of the best experiences that I've had in my life so far. Um, and she says I went to Ohio University, which is a very like small town university like it's very communal very rural um which i wanted i didn't want i didn't want a big like city university where i'd feel a bit lost and overwhelmed um but it was just amazing and you get out there and everybody is obviously so enamored with you and your experience and your perspective on america because you know you're going to this university where people have been, you know, hammered about their American history and their personal attachments to it. And they don't often consider the other perspective that you could offer. 
And I remember my lecturers in America being so excited for the perspective that an international student can offer. Um, I remember doing one course about the founding of Ohio and any time that my lecture would talk about the, the independent war and, you know, Britain's role in the founding of Ohio or just America in general, he would just ask for my input and, you know, ask what did I think and what did I know? Um, so they really do try to get you involved, make you feel at home because you're there for a year and it's weird because you get there and there's so much to do and you're doing so much and you're learning so much that you feel like this is just going on forever. But then when you, you know, when it's over, you think, well, that just flew by. Um, it's just gone in a second. And what I wouldn't give to be able to go back and do it again. Um, but I had so many opportunities, so many experiences in my year abroad. As Anne-Marie says, I also joined um, a sports team when I was in America. I joined the fencing team at Ohio, um, which is really a good way to, you know, introduce yourself to new people because I was in a one else from Swansea with me. So, you know, you have to force yourself to get out and meet people and joining a society, uh, whether it's sports or just general interest or hobbies is one of the best ways to do that because you know you can bond over this shared experience as I say I joined the fencing team and everyone was lovely and they became some of my closest friends while I was there and I couldn't imagine my year abroad without them um, but in terms of the academics as well in and of itself um, as everyone stated so far the range of topics which you could study while you're out there is enormous and it really does help you get an even firmer understanding of the degree in general um so obviously you have the two years to develop a sort of interest but then you go to america and they have you know so many different options for you um to choose from so i remember in my year abroad i did so many different modules i did one on the civil war I did quite a few on the um, Cold War and the 1960s, which was my like personal interest. Um, I did one about the developing arts and you know social sciences since the early 20th century in America. I did one on literature, one on the history of New York. There's just so many opportunities to just delve into any sort of niche subject that you could possibly ever want to study. Um, and as you say, the opportunity to study that you then carry back to you in your um, final year when you come back to the UK and you can build on that even more. So, for example, when I was there, as I say, I did quite a few modules on the Civil War, the 1960s, and that really took hold of me. So when I came back, um, I wrote my dissertation on that subject. So I wrote my dissertation on Robert Kennedy because I just become so fascinated by his life. And his role which I don't I didn't think a lot of people had given enough focus to but to really illustrate the interdisciplinary aspect of the degree in general my master's thesis I'm now writing about queer representation in you know professional sports in America so you know the ability to switch between different subjects and topics and you know history politics literature culture anything like that it just there's so many branching opportunities so many different avenues you can go down and it's never too late you never have to just stick yourself to one sort of um discipline you can say well oh, i've done the history and i'm but now i kind of want to do more politics or literature or whatever it may be um but yeah, I just think also in general that no matter what you do or where you go, uh, any opportunity you have to study abroad or go abroad, no matter for how long, um, for what subject, whatever you're doing, I think it's such a worthwhile opportunity because it just gives you that confidence boost that, you know, that sort of voice inside your head that says, you know, I've lived it in a different country for a year you know I've overcome all these challenges and obstacles and I've organized myself and you know I was able to go out there I was outgoing I met new people I learned new things I think it's just 
you know, it's one of those experiences that really does change who you are and the trajectory of your life. Um, so I just could not recommend it enough. Um, yeah. So if there's any questions, obviously feel free to ask me or Amanda or anyone about that sort of opportunity. But yeah, I just could not stress enough the positive aspects of these schemes enough. Thank you so much, Matthew. And thank you to all of our speakers who have spoken so far. I know I really enjoyed hearing about the different opportunities um, of studying an American studies degree and the, the opportunities that they offer. Um, if anybody tuning in does have any questions for any of our speakers, you, um, I'll invite all of our speakers to come back up on the screen now. Um, and you can go ahead and pop those questions into the Q&A box. And just to get us started while people type their questions into the box, I was wondering if I could ask Amanda and, and Matthew, if you could speak a little bit about, did you notice any differences um, in taking a class in the UK versus taking a class in the US? Um, you know, did, did, was it, has it been different in any way um, in the teaching style or in the, the classroom experience? Um. Yeah, I would say it was very different. I mean, when you start organising these year abroads, at least in Swansea, you have, you know, so many meetings that is preparing you for your year abroad for so many different aspects that you're going to have to focus on. And when they were, you know, you talk to people who've already done a year abroad, they just, just talk about how, you know, things work out there. And, you know, you kind of think it can't be that different. But when you go out there, it kind of just hits you how differently things are one. It's not sort of something you give too much focus on as compared to, you know, what, where are you going to be living and, you know, what opportunities are you going to have? Um, so when I started going to classes, I was just shocked by the different ways in which it works. So, for example, I wasn't used to having, you know, essays due in every week rather than, you know, in the UK, ours are kind of just you know you have one big essay around halfway through the semester and then you can have like another big essay at the end we can have an exam I mean all modules are different but that's kind of in Swansea that's the basic layout of a of a module is an essay and exam whereas in America I had like you know an essay due every week there was one to two pages about all these different topics or you could have multiple choice quizzes or you know participation we had debates in classes and all this sort of stuff that it was just a lot more fluid and you never really knew what you were getting into with every different module because they could all be run very differently um i'd say the participation and is a lot bigger in america which is probably good because you know when you start talking and they hear your accent they think oh, i want to hear like this perspective I want to know what this person thinks. So I think it's for the best. But yeah, I think just the way in which you get involved in your studies in America is a lot different to the UK. And I think it's for the best because, again, it really does make you, you know, appreciate the different ways in which you could go about your studies and, you know, it gives you that chance to appreciate different perspectives as well. I, I completely agree with Matthew. It's I have the exact same experience and I'm in the middle of it right now. Um, I have so many small quizzes due and so much more in-person sort of teaching here and participation, um, you know, attendance is as a required part. It's not the same at UCL at all. And, and we'd have two massive um, essays, for example. And one big difference that I've noticed is that here, nothing is research-based. In the UK, things are research-based. For example, with the essays, you get to choose um, an essay prompt and then you do your own research and write um, an essay about something that you particularly care about, perhaps. Uh, while here it's more, you have a lot of, um, lot of knowledge that you learn in class and in your modules. And it's about learning that and understanding that rather than doing extra research on something different. Um, and so that's very different, but as Matthew said, I really do appreciate this uh, and it's a completely different way of learning and I really love um, both the different um, ways 
um, I'd say, but it's it, it definitely is different. Um, I, I in the beginning it was really difficult to get used to. Like I have to be in class every single time. Um, otherwise, my grade will be lowered. Even yeah, it's it's very interesting. But I love going to class, so <laughs> something negative. Thank you both for those for those answers and for sharing your experiences. Um, we have another question for the students about what the application process is like for a year abroad and how you decided which U.S. university you wanted to study at. Maybe uh, Amanda, okay. do you want to start? Uh, uh, Matthew, is it okay if Amanda starts at this time? Yeah, I should have, I should have said. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> maybe it's a, a bit more fresh in my memory since I did this literally this spring. Um, so for me, um, UCL, as uh, uh, Anne-Marie mentioned, I believe, is that the youth, uh, different universities offer different colleges in the U.S. And uh, we, I had a list of a couple. And um, University of Pennsylvania, of course, the, the, uh, it's an Ivy League school. Of course, that was a big plus for me. Um, but also the fact that it's on the East Coast um, with the time differences of uh, US and the UK, that was a, a big, big thing for me. And uh, I'm close to New York and close to Washington, DC. Uh, the culture here is relatively similar to Europe, at least compared to, for example, Florida or California, uh, which is something I really liked. I liked having, I like having cold weather. So uh, that was a big plus for me. And with the application process, as I said, there are different universities you can choose between. And then I had to um, write um, an application to my uh, Institute of the Americas at UCL, ranking my top three choices and why I wanted to go to um, my top choice and my second and third choice. Um, and uh, then when I was so lucky to get University of Pennsylvania, I, after that, had to apply to you can immediate like directly as well but um, it's very unlikely that after UCL or your home university in the UK has recommended you to your US university that they will uh, say no all of a sudden um, so really focus on getting that spot that your university in the UK has yeah yeah I think Swansea's was a lot similar to what UCL seems to have done as well. Um, like Amory and Hillary have said in, for Sussex and UEA, Swansea also has, I think, over 40 different partners in America in which you could choose to go to. So in at the start of your second year in Swansea, um, you'll have a meeting which is basically to get you started thinking about where you want to go and what you'd want to do on your year abroad. So you'll get the full list of the university partners and it will ask you to research them and then try and choose ours as a top five of which ones you want to go to um and again like amanda said you have to kind of justify why you want to go there and it will ask you to think about you know different aspects because obviously there are important things like you have to know what sort of courses the university will offer that will benefit your interest but they also have the things like amanda mentioned like weather like in ohio is the same like i wanted it's, it was very similar weather to the UK, like I didn't want to go to somewhere too cold or too hot. So it was, you know, that nice balance or, you know, I'll ask you um, if you want to go to a specific state for family or friends or anything, or, you know, even could just be sports or anything like that. You know, it is all personal preference and they take into account all those different sort of um, academic and personal reasons as to why you might want to go there. Um, they'll never promise you that you'll get your first choice because, you know, there are so many people that are applying for so many different things, you know, you can't guarantee that, but it's usually guaranteed that you'd probably get within your top five choices. And so that's why they ask you to pick that many because you are usually guaranteed to pick to get into one of those. So for example, Ohio was my third choice university for my year abroad. Um, and I was mainly sent there because I was one of the only people in my year that said that I was fine to go to America by myself. Like I didn't have a problem going on my own without someone that I knew already. Um, so it's all these different things that can influence where you end up going. Um, 
but they'll help you every step of the way i'm sure no matter where you go there's so much help and support that you can get um in terms of you know having meetings and getting to know you know the representatives of the different universities you might be interested in um as and financially as well because i nobody ever wants someone to not go on the abroad because of money you know there'll be every help to make sure that it's financially viable for anyone to go on their year abroad no matter what their situation is thank you both for that <clears throat> um so that's talking a little bit about choosing a university in the us on the other side of the coin i was wondering if hillary and Anne marie if maybe you could speak to um, we talk a lot about fit here at Education USA and the um, Fulbright Commission and students finding their fit. So when you're looking at students who are choosing American studies as their degree, um, what, you know, what kind of students would American studies be a good fit for? Um, shall I jump in and then I'll hand to Anne-Marie? Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, look, honestly, the number one thing we say to our students is we're looking for enthusiasm, right? We're looking for interest in America. And I think um, given that there's not an American studies A-level, uh, where we're interested in just about, I mean, kind of within reason, any student who can demonstrate that they're, you know, they're engaged in kind of the, the history and the culture of, of America um, and that they're interested in thinking about that discursively, I guess, like they're, you know, they're interested in discussing those ideas, challenging those ideas um, and, and articulating, you know, those ideas, th those ideas back. So, so we're looking for, we do generally want an A-level in, as I say, in a, in a discursive type subject. So literature, history, um, you know, politics, media. Um, we certainly get, get a number of students through um, that have come to us from a, a media studies type pathway, uh, particularly because at UEA, we're in a broader organizational school that is the School of Art, Media and American Studies. So while you be in your own department at UEA, we interact with and we cross teach a lot with art history. So we do a lot of visual culture. Um, we do several modules on photography in American history um, and American culture. We do modules on film um, and this isn't peculiar to, to American studies, um, but we also share a number of modules with our film studies and media studies colleagues. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of kind of cross fertilization, I guess that way. So really, yeah, we need students who um, are prepared to make arguments about the world um, and to get into discussions about about the place of the US. Um, but we're not looking for a specific kind of, you know, English focus or history focus, you know, or, or politics focus, um, because I think so much of what you will do in American studies is this kind of new interdisciplinary hybrid form. So, so yeah, I'll pass to Anne Marie now. Yeah, thanks, Hillary. Um, I would agree with everything that Hillary's just said. And I think um, one thing to think about is if you're a student who actually isn't sure that one particular discipline is the right place for you, right? If you don't think, okay, I am definitely a history student, or I'm definitely an English literature student, or definitely a politics or even sociology student, um, American studies could be the right place for you, right? Um, so one thing we really emphasize in our teaching, especially in the first year, I'm taking the first year core module this year, and we're looking at all the different kinds of sources you can use for study as an American studies student. So we're looking at music and film, um, different forms of popular culture. I teach a lecture on comic books. Um, so those kinds of things that you might not um, necessarily associate with one particular discipline. Um, or you might think, well, I'm really interested in literature, but I also like music a bit, but not enough to do a degree in it. American studies would be a great place for you. Um, one thing I wanted to add is that we have a number of joint honors courses. So if there is a kind of particular subject that you are really attached to, you can do a joint honors degree. So you would combine American studies with English literature or history, film, politics, international relations. 
Um, at Sussex, we have a law with American studies course where you do 75% of your degree in law and 25% in American studies. So there are ways if you've got a favorite subject, but you also want to do the American component that you can combine them as well. Thank you for that. Um, we've had a couple of questions about the possibility of studying for, for longer than a year in the US. And um, if Hillary or Emery have anything to add to this, I can kind of get started. And if you have any other information, you can feel free to add. Um, so typically my understanding is that it would be for a year, uh, a semester or a year as part of your degree. Um, it might be that after you've completed your undergraduate degree, you choose to return to the US for postgraduate study um, for, for a master's or a PhD. Um, and if you're interested in that, or if perhaps you're interested in going to the US for your whole degree, uh, for a whole undergraduate degree, then um, Education USA and the US UK Fulbright Commissioner actually can help you with, with all of that. We have a ton of information available on our website, fulbright.org.uk. We have events of uh, other webinars that we offer that, that talk all about pursuing a postgraduate degree in the US, pursuing an undergraduate degree, um, a full undergraduate degree in the US as well. So if you're interested in learning more about any of that, you can head to our website. But I'm not sure if um, Hillary or Emery, if you're aware of uh, the possibility of studying beyond a year at the undergraduate level as part of an American studies degree. I can speak to that for a minute. We've had um, a number of students who really enjoyed their year abroad, came back into their final year, and then did apply to do master's programs in the US. We have an American Studies student who's at NYU right now um, doing a master's. Um, they're at the University of Massachusetts. There is a, a, an American History MA that actually reserves some places every year for foreign students who want to further their undergraduate education. Um, so there are opportunities and there are also opportunities um, over the long run if you wanted to work in the US. Um, we have students who have started work with UK companies. Um, a former student of ours worked for Adobe um, in the UK and then got placed in the US and now works in San Francisco permanently. So there's careers opportunities as well as further study. Yeah, I think that's pretty comprehensive. Um, I don't think there's anything I, I have to add. Similarly, we've had, we actually just had a brilliant um, former student who did her PhD um, in, in the US just come back and present at our, uh, our, our research seminar. So, um, so yeah, so there, are, there is a kind of long-term trajectory where some students do, do make it back. Um, and, and, but, but yeah, I don't have anything specific to add. So. Um, we've had another question and maybe, um, Hillary, you can start with this one and if Anne-Marie has anything to add about the usual assessment methods in American studies in the UK. Um, I saw that and I was excited that that question um, <laughs> got asked um, because more and more, and again, I think I can speak across American studies programs, we're trying to move away from standard essay based um, uh, assessment. Now, it's not to say you won't do that, because ultimately one of the things that we're, we're trying to get you to do is to be able to articulate a position um, on a particular issue um, or on, you know, to, to evaluate sources and then, you know, tell us um, what they tell us about history, to, to closely analyze literature. Um, but more and more, we're, we're trying to do that in, in some more innovative ways. So our students, we run a module on fake news, for example, um, and our students write, uh, they do podcasts, um, blogs, you know, they, you know, they write, they write news bulletins. Um, they also get to spend some time in our television studio. This is one of the perks of being attached to the media studies department. Um, they, you know, they put on their own news broadcasts. So there's a number of different ways in which um, we're really trying to bring, again, that, that kind of close relationship with film, film, television and media um, into a relationship with American studies. One of the most exciting things that we've just launched is a publishing project. Um, and this is a final year module that I teach with my colleague, Tom Smith. And we publish, it's on 19th century American children's literature and American childhoods. And we publish a book at the end of it. So the students did mood boards. They did, they wrote the, the introduction. They wrote the scholarly introduction. It went away to a peer reviewer um, who's a wonderful colleague of ours, uh, Michelle Coughlin. I can see Anne-Marie nodding. Um, she's at Manchester. She's well known to all of us. She's a really generous, fantastic colleague. Um, so she, she read the, the student's introduction, 
put it through peer review and in a matter of days we're going to have an actual edition of the 19th century classic what Katie did in her hands and the, the students worked with a book designer to to put together the cover so she looked at all their mood boards and and mocked up um a plan for that so so yeah we've been again, sort of trying to, particularly through the pandemic, um, connect American studies to uh, to the world of work, to, you know, to, to kind of tangible things that you can take away out of your degree and say, look, I made this thing, I did this thing, you know, I, I, I was in, you know, I was in this video, I, I produced this suite of articles on contemporary events. Um, and I think I, I speak for all American studies programs when I say that we're really keen to, to do that more and more and to, to share that practice across institutions. So. Yeah, thanks, Hillary. That was really comprehensive. I think, um, we, I would say, you know, if you're concerned about examinations, I would say that we tend towards fewer examinations in general, um, more essay and coursework type things, whether that's a kind of um, creative project. Um, and there is somewhat of an emphasis on presentation skills as well, which I think are really important for whatever you will go on to do after university. So in our degree, we have some group presentations um, and an individual presentation, and you get a lot of kind of scaffolding and help and preparation in um, learning those key presentation skills that will help you to succeed no matter what you do after university. That's great. Thank you both so much. Um, so I think we've got time for maybe one more question before we wrap up. So I, I have another question for Amanda and Matthew that that's um, maybe a little bit different, a little off topic. I'm wondering if either of you tried or uh, have tried like any new foods um, during your time and you know, it's, it's hard to describe kind of American food to somebody, right? And it's very, it can be very regional uh and, you know so i'm wondering you know and maybe maybe you haven't but i'm just wondering if anything pops to mind if somebody asks you have you tried any american you know what your the most unique thing you tried or your favorite thing that you've tried do either of you ha have something that comes to mind i don't want to put somebody immediately on the spot is anyone thinking of anything <laughs> amanda <laughs> well the philly cheesesteak uh, cheese so it's, it's a classic philadelphia food just and can you can you describe that for anybody listening that may may not be familiar with a Philly cheesesteak? <laughs> so it's a big hoagie. Apparently, hoagie is an American word as well, uh, like a, a big bread like baguette, but like soft and big, and then just steak in it with perhaps some sweet peppers and just a bunch of American white cheese on it, and then you just eat it. <laughs> and what was, what was the verdict? What did you think? I love it. <laughs> I've had it like 10 times. <laughs> love it. And tater tots. Like, very American. But yeah, I love American food. <laughs> yeah, I found because during my year abroad, I did, I really took advantage and I did a lot of traveling, um, like trying to go to different places. So I remember I did a three week tour of California over the course of Christmas and like being able to go from like the food in san francisco i remember going to like the little italy um sort of area and then to the chinatown area of san francisco and then so which were amazing you know to get that authentic sort of food was amazing and then to la which is you know where we were and what we did was kind of more commercialized so you, you know i saw these adverts for these American chains and I thought I should really try these since I'm here so like going to all the different American chains and seeing what they were like was another experience that I thought to really immerse yourself in America and to make you feel like you were there um I remember going to Seattle and going to the fish market in Seattle in the Seattle um harbor that was amazing that was really fresh and that was lovely um and then going to Vegas um, and that was just an experience all on its own and I don't really know how I would qualify Vegas in you know in in that area but no just wherever you go like there's going to be all those sorts of opportunities to try all these different things and it's just amazing. Yeah and you really managed to get quite a few places and during your time that's great. 
Um, well, I think that unfortunately we are out of time. And so I will wrap us up here, but I just want to say a, a very big thank you to all of our speakers for giving their time this evening to speak to all of you about American studies degrees in the UK and the opportunity to do a year abroad um, as part of that degree. Um, as I said at the beginning, uh, this session has been recorded, and so I'll be sharing that recording with all of you in the coming days. Um, and I just thank you all for tuning in tonight, and I hope you have a good evening. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Nice to meet everyone.